need you all to hear what I'm saying. Success is a plan that takes years in the making. When nobody did, I believe. I had to let go of things I did not need. Cut off some friends in the process. What could I say? I could no longer carry the dead weight. Get off your ass. There's lots you can do. You want to learn something and watch how I move. But they don't want to do shit. They want to be spoon fed like a little baby. That shit is crazy, boy. Change up your mindset. I get three days worth of work done in just one. Seven, two, seven. Mindset is the hustle for us. You get it? 727 podcast and today i'm coming at you from my home office and i'm at my work office yeah, they're so both blue get <laughs> some podcasts going you know we're a little behind this year we've been very busy trying to slow down so that way we could speed up today we're going to be talking about getting your house in order you know getting all your financials straight so that way you're not having to work from home and get everything together so we're pretty behind right now we put our trust in a lot of people last year that uh, we shouldn't have, and we're pretty much starting from scratch. So it's going to be a long process, but I'm definitely willing to undertake it, and we're actually getting somewhere. If there's any advice I could give to a new business owner, it would be to get your back office in order and have a very, very clear understanding and organization and categorization of everything that you do. Because the feeling of... Like, I really feel like even after nine years of being in business this year, I woke up and realized how much of a shit show I created with all of the non-organization and the trusting and not handling things hands-on myself or setting it up. So it's totally my fault. I take full responsibility for it or our fault because we're a team. But at any rate, um, that would be my very first bit of advice for a new business owner is get your stuff organized and do it while you're able to because if we would have done what we're doing now back when it was just me and you in a 400 square foot office nine years ago if we would have done this then wow i can't even imagine where we would be after a decade and we've been very successful we've done a lot of really good business but we've done it um like a roller coaster, a little bit of a hamster wheel here. So now I'm just super excited about uh, getting to all of this and having it set up exactly how it should be because our potential of what's to come is just going to be so much more. I'm excited. I was talking to Jamie about just having peace of mind, you know, and this is like dragging and it's weighing heavy on me. And You know, how can you have peace of mind when you don't even know what the hell is going on? You know, I'm out here making buttload of money and you know and for what when i don't even know where the hell it's going i need to really get a hold of what's going on and now that i'm looking at these statements and i'm looking to see like what we're paying out it's insane it's insane with the money that goes out every single month thank god you know i make it rain but at the end of the day it doesn't really matter if you are keeping it so i need to really look and see where is it going where can i cut the fat and most importantly, what's working so that way we can spend more money on that and obviously create more money. But until we get everything in order, you know, we're not going to get anywhere. We're running literally full speed in the wrong direction. And right now we're starting to jog in the right direction. So, you know, it comes down to every single thing that you're spending money on, you know, write it down. I always talk to my clients about it and show them ways and then how they can save money. You know, I blame myself. I, it's been a very long time that I've even logged into my bank account. Uh, you know, I put everything on Jamie and, you know, a lot of other people. And there's a lot of hats that Jamie has to wear. So sometimes it's it's difficult. It's not a hard task to add and subtract and, you know, see where, where your money is going. It's just sitting down and actually doing it. So that way you can figure it out. We have a lot of people that help us. We have a lot of, uh, you know, tax coaches and stuff like that. But it doesn't help if you don't have your numbers right. So that's why, you know, if it's going to take me a whole month to do it, that's fine. I'm willing to do it because it's a very slow and methodical process. you got to figure out where every single dollar is accounted for. If you're a business owner, you know, you got to figure out, you know, which business is it. If you have multiple businesses, if you are uh, doing rehabs or buying properties like our Solves. You have to know where every single dollar went to each property so that way you can keep track of what profit was made at the end of the day and how much taxes you're going to owe Uncle Sam because you don't want to be hit with a big tax bill at the end of the year. 
we've got it and it's not a good thing. You know, I, I talk to some of my friends, some of my mentors, some of my coaches, and they get some surprise million dollar tax bills. So just like the great philosopher P. Diddy once said, more money, more problems. He couldn't be more right. The more money you make, the more problems there will be guaranteed. And when you're not expecting a million dollar tax bill, they're coming for your ass. I mean, they will seize your assets. They will take money right out of your bank account. They will take anything they could get their hands on. So it's very, very important. Give us some tips, Jane, on what we could be doing so this shit never happens again. So, yeah, so going back to um, it has nothing to do with what you make. It's what you spend. One of the things that hit me most recently was our, one of our mentors said he knows every single month exactly what he spends on paper clips. And I'm sitting there like, oh, my goodness, that's horrible because I don't know. It's not like we're making all this money and going out and living these lavish lives. We're realizing and discovering now that the issues are – accidentally having insurance on things you no longer own, um, you know, accidentally paying for services that were in a plan that it was different. Charge. I mean, a lot of money wasted, which is why it's so important to have your books in order. So first things first, you have to have an accounting system somehow, some way. When I first started, I was, well, still am a little bit of a dinosaur. I use spreadsheets, you know, whether it's Google spreadsheets, Microsoft spread, Microsoft Excel spreadsheets. Um, those are definitely very useful. But at the end of the day, uh, my new financial advisor has says, you know what, you got to get out of the, the stone ages and you got to use a QuickBooks because the one thing that they're going to be looking for you have to have profit and loss statements and you have to have balance sheets. That's super, super important. And if you put these things and implement them in place early on, as you grow, it will be totally seamless. Make sure that um, you're categorizing things. So know that expenses of a business, where do they belong? Are they office supplies? Are they utilities? Is it um, education? Is it legal things? You have to make sure you know where those things go because not everything is a write-off, but you'll also be surprised to find some things that are a write-off that you had no idea were in the past. Um, so making sure that you have your accounting system, making sure that you categorize and organize and hire a bookkeeper. So I was my own bookkeeper for the first couple of years and I did everything with the spreadsheet, but I understood it and I knew where it was. As I grew and I started to pass it along because I didn't implement and put the systems in place to show them how to do it, I had people helping that were kind of just doing it how it made sense to them, which was totally 100% of what I should not have been doing. So as we grew, things just started to like explode, I feel like. But when you have your bookkeeper, you have to make sure you're staying connected. Make sure that you're having weekly, daily meetings, where the money's at, what's coming in, what's going out, what's needed, what can we what can we cut, and then everything makes sense. So anytime that you look at it throughout the year, you're gonna be able to make sense of it. Very important. Just like Jamie was saying about meeting with your people, it can't be more true. You want to make sure that you have every single thing that's being spent on a credit card or coming out of your bank account accounted for. It doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter. Create a category for it. Then we need to keep track of every single thing that you're spending money on. So that way, at the end of the month, when you look and you're like, wow, I spent $400 at McDonald's this month, you know, it'll, you know, click real quick. Do I really need to be eating $400 of McDonald's every day? Or I'm sorry, a month. You can... You know, buy some groceries and cook some stuff at home and, you know, save yourself a whole bunch of money that way. And not only that, a few calories. So it's very important that you meet with your people and that way they know because a lot of times, you know, they're not in your life. They're not psychic. They're not going to know that, hey, this $400 or $4,000 or $20,000 charge, um, what it was exactly. So you got to let them know, like, hey. You know, yep, it's a write-off. No, it's not a write-off. Or, hey, I spent that this. Or, you know, it's a $20,000, you know, deposit, but only 4000 of it is profit, stuff like that. So that way you're only paying on the $4,000, not on the $20,000. And you can be selling watches, shoes, whatever. It doesn't matter what the total amount is. What matters is how much profit. So I've seen it happen with even properties that we purchased in the past where let's just use an example of a house that we sold for $200,000. So we'll get a $200,000 uh, 1099 or whatever it is that the title company sends, and they're going to send it, and it's going to say $200,000. They don't know how much 
money was profited and how much money you spent on the rehab and what you paid for the property. They don't care about any of that. They're only sending a 1099 or whatever it is that they send from the title company that says it's $200,000. And then you know what my accountants have, have been doing? They've been adding the whole $200,000 is profit and now I owe the IRS profit on two, or taxes on 200000 instead of maybe the forty or fifty or $60,000 profit that we made. So it goes five times as much taxes that I'm paying the IRS as opposed to what I would really be owing them. So that's like very important to meet with them and let them know, hey, see this $200,000? Well, here's what I paid for the property. This is what I spent on it. This was my holding cost after all of this. This is the profit that was left. So that way your numbers are done right the first time. And done, you know, if you can meet with them weekly, that would be amazing. And definitely at the end of the month, close out the month. So that way you know, you know, have a PL, you know, profit and loss statement. So that way you know how much am I making, you know, at the end of every month. You know, has it, is it a loss? Is it a profit? And it's very important because once you start getting towards the end of the year, if you're making a whole bunch of money, you got to spend some of that shit. You don't want to owe the IRS hundreds of thousands of dollars when you could go and buy a property that'll take care of some of that tax money. Go and buy a work truck. You know, and at the end of the day, you would be paying all of that money to the IRS. So, hey, why not spend it on an asset or, you know, something for your business that you can write off instead of giving it to the IRS? And now you actually have something to show for it. But there's no way that you can figure that out if you don't know what your numbers are. You don't know at the end of the year how much money you're making. And, and what's worse is here we are in March, you know, months after last year, and we still don't know what the hell happened last year. We know it was a hot mess because we had so many things going on. And it doesn't help when a uh, month, you know, I think it was like December 1st, your bookkeeper decides to quit because it was so overwhelming and she knows how much shit she fucked up. So, you know, at the end of the day, we blame ourselves, but, um, you know, if that's something that you're doing and you have somebody in place, make sure that you're getting these numbers monthly at least so that way you know that this isn't happening. So, because, man, when I tell you that this is painful, I mean, I, I, I think it'd be more fun, you know, sticking a couple of needles in my eyes. <laughs> so I, my mentality is now do and document. Um, if you do it, you got to document it directly after. And I knew that I worked for attorneys for a lot of years. So I knew that everything had to be documented. Everything has to be saved, but don't wait until the end of the year. So you definitely don't want to find out in December that you have to spend money because then you're just going to make some crazy purchase. And what happens? We've, heard of people out there that go and make oh your account tells you, you got to go and spend money and then you go and spend money and they say oh you know what you didn't have to spend that money so we want to make sure that you're doing things throughout the year that's why they have business owners that you can file quarterly some people do it for reasons and some people don't but at any rate you should have a clear understanding of what's going on as the year is going through so you're not waiting until the end of the year to have to make any big purchases to offset the money that you spent everybody pays taxes whether you own a business or whether you're going to work in a w-2 job taxes have to be paid there's no way around it so you got to find yourself um you know organization so then that way you can consult with your financial advisor or your accountant so then they can let you know the right way to make good educated tax decisions for sure one last thing i want to make mention is that i always throughout the years whether i spend but um, money on a credit card or business credit card or cash. I always save the receipts, which is great now, but it is just better. Don't go out and spend business purchases with cash because there's a huge margin for error there. One, it's not you know trackable. Let's say that you lose a receipt. Let's say that you get into a situation where you don't track everything that you that you're doing. If you have it on a credit card. All of that stuff is documented, and if those credit cards are hooked up, your business credit cards are hooked up with your accounting system, it's automatic. They go directly in there, and then they're reconciling, so then that way you don't have to sit here and piece together receipts at the end of the year and get all those manual totals. At the end of the day, it's just so time-consuming, and once you get control of your time, you get control of your freedom. That's like the... That's like the motto of the year, 2024, is like, get your freedom. And the only way you're going to do that is if you can get control of your time. And the only way you're going to get control of your time is if you stay organized. Absolutely. So, like Jamie was talking about earlier, being a dinosaur. So, as soon as I got this task, you know, thrown at me, or I guess I volunteered to, you know, start it, um, first thing I did was grab a notebook. You know, I got a brand new notebook out. You know, I got myself some sticky tabs. And I started writing different um, accounts, you know. So, you know, is it Corona Realty? You know, is it for uh, ComEd? You know, ADT, 
you know, what do we spend in marketing, you know, different things like that. There was finally, I don't know, 50 different tabs sticking out of the notebook. So I, you know, had them sticking out the top and I wrote it on the front and the back. So that way I could flip through it and I left a few pages. Um, so, I mean, you don't got to have QuickBooks. That's what we have, you know, but I, honestly, I don't know how to use that shit. So I just started doing it on paper so that way I can, you know, get going with it. Um, after the first day, I went back into the office and I, you know, I asked one of the girls to help me out to create, you know, some Google spreadsheets or I don't even know what the hell they're called. But um, so she put some stuff together, created uh, the tabs for all the little tag, uh, sticky notes that I had. And, you know, they helped me transfer what I had written down in a notebook onto the computer. And now I feel pretty fancy because, um, you know, I'm using it. So it's like the first time I've ever really worked on a computer. Jamie showed me a few things where I get copy and paste, so I feel pretty, uh, like I said, I, I don't even know, like, you know, pretty, I feel like a, like a teacher right now, I'm pretty educated, <laughs> but um, it's, it's pretty crazy because, like, you know, I, I literally don't even know how, even before this right here, this uh, podcast that we're doing right now, literally gave me brain damage just to, I had to go to like two different computers just to try to get the volume to work and um you know some of this technology is it's way over my head i just uh you know need to go right back to the beginning so um like what jamie was talking about as well it's very important you get yourself separate credit cards you know get a personal credit card get a business credit card and use it just for that i know sometimes this stuff gets convoluted and we need some extra money or we need to live off our credit cards or whatever have you uh, try to keep it as organized as possible because you don't want to be in a hot ass mess. You don't know where the money went, uh, or worse, you have to like look up every single uh, time that you spent something on that credit card to see what did I spend it on, where should this go. It's time consuming. I mean, this this is taking a very long time. I'm, I, I feel like I'm really not getting too far, you know, as fast as I would like. Well, and I have to tell you that I just love and appreciate you so much. I have to say that I did not ask you for help on this side of it because you do so much already. And I know how you're like super fast paced and all over the place and crazy. Like, and it, I just, I felt like you just didn't have the patience to hear me explain what it was that needed to be done. But there is no better people to do this part of it because then it starts to make sense. Like when, you know, you know, we're like, we are, we are in just such a shit show, obviously within the last year where we pulled money from every orifice just to survive. I mean, it was insane. The hole that we are digging out of still, but I just appreciate the fact that by you doing it, you're one, you're, you're discovering things that I didn't even know, which is great because there's no better people to get a front row seat to your business than you as a business owner, because you actually care about everything and what's going on. But then also too, it helps to uh, moving forward to do it the right way. Um, so thank you. It's good. You know, I never did it to this extent, I would say, uh, but you know, it's, like I said, if I figured it out, it'd be pretty simple. There's nothing to it. It's just do it. You know, and it does, it is going to take some time. Um, you know, if you guys have any questions on any tax law, because it's very important to know your tax laws. I do have tax coaches that we have uh, on retainer and we can ask them. So if you guys have any questions, you know, I don't care what business it is, what tax question you got. Um, I don't care what state you're in. You know, I have people that can find this answer for you. So feel free to, you know, get in our DMs and, reach out to us anytime and you know, ask us any questions, you know, so anything we could do to help, we, that's why we went over this because I don't want people to have to ever go through it with the fuck I'm going through right now. You know, I, I'm telling you, I'm, you know, I'd like to stab myself in the eyes, but, um, you know, I, I'm actually having a little fun doing it. It's just, like I said, I wish it moved a little bit faster and um, it's really eye opening to see like the money that we have to spend. You know, I, I'm sure when clients think to themselves, oh man, you know, they just made such and such commission on my house or selling the house. At the end of the day, shit, if we end up with fucking $10, I, I'd, be, I'd be really impressed. So, um, where, you know, a lot of money goes out, a lot of money goes out in marketing, a lot of money goes out to all our agents to help out. And, um, you know, whether we sell a house or we don't, they still have to get paid. So, and the lights still need to be on. And, you know, taxes need to be paid. There's a, there's a lot of bills. There's a lot of bills that, that we got to pay every single month. 
It's very eye-opening, and yes, we are definitely open books, so if you ever have a question, I would love to tell you, like, these are the mistakes that I made to save you the hassle later, because it's literally taken me a decade to, to wake up. A decade, that's a long time. So but like Danny said, we you, know, uh, we're, you know, we're looking for freedom. You know, that's that's the goal. That's the goal of all of us. That's the goal of working so much. That's the goal of, um, you know, doing what we do every single day, day in and day out, is knowing that one day you know, we'll have a little less to do and you know, everything will be taken care of itself and we'll have enough cash flow to maintain our lives and most importantly, we'll have enough time to spend with our family and our kids and our friends and our team and do whatever it is that we want every single day. Yep, definitely. So, you know somebody that want, needs to hear this or wants to hear it, please share it with them, send it to them, tag us. If you guys need anything, reach out to our DM. And as always, man, we love you. We want to see you guys win. This is 727 Podcast. I'm Alex Corona. And I'm Jamie Burks. We'll see you guys soon. need you all to hear what i'm saying success is a plan that takes years in the making when nobody did i believe I had to let go of things i did not need cut off some friends in the process what could i say i could no longer carry the dead weight get off your ass